Hi, and welcome to our third session of the North Carolina Virtual Family History Fair. I'm Kristen Merriman, and for the next hour, I'll be talking about using digitalnc.org for family research. If you do have questions, we really encourage you to put them in the live chat during the session, and we'll answer them at the end. So I am the digital project librarian at the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center, which is located at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill's campus, but we are a joint project between UNC and the State Library of North Carolina. Um, and what we do is we work with institutions across the state, cultural heritage institutions, to digitize their materials and make them available online. So we work with a variety of types of institutions. We work with public libraries, local history rooms, museums, historic societies, community colleges, small colleges, big colleges, um, and we also have started working with alumni associations across the state. Um, and we currently have 224 different partner institutions across North Carolina. So a wide variety of materials are freely available online at our site www.digitalnc.org. And we are constantly adding material to our site, constantly digitizing things. And so if you don't find something you need initially, always be checking back because it's always changing what we have available on, on our website. This is our homepage. Uh, it has a good overview of how many institutions we're working with and uh, the types of materials on our site. So you can see that we have yearbooks, newspapers, images, uh, memorabilia, which is kind of our catch-all. So that can include scrapbooks, correspondence, um, diaries, journals, pretty much anything you might find in a museum or a historic society. We have probably digitized that type of material. We have dresses, we have quilts. Um, so really a little bit of everything. Uh, city directories, we have a very large collection of, and audiovisual audio materials, and that includes both uh, video and audio content, including an oral history collection. Um, and though all, each of those pages has its own landing page to search and browse. You can also uh, browse our content by our contributors and also by counties and so this gives a really good overview of how much we've covered our state um, we have content that covers all 100 counties and we currently have partners in 78 of the 100 counties so we really have a pretty broad reach across North Carolina And each county has its own page that shows all the material that's available from it. So if you have ancestors that lived in a particular county or set of counties, you can really narrow your search to those particular counties and just look for what we have available from those counties. Um, you can also see what institutions we've worked with in the county, um, as well as newspapers from that county and anything we've posted on our blog or uh, additional links to other cultural heritage sites like the Digital Public Library of America or the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources who's been talking a lot about their materials all day today. Um, and so we really try to get you to as many resources as you can through our website. And then each, in addition to each county, each partner institution that we've worked with has its own page to show what they've contributed to the site. And so this is Forsyth County Public Library. You can see they've contributed um, almost every type of material we have available. And they also have um, some materials and specific digital exhibits and some newspapers that they've contributed. And so, um, and at the bottom we have their contact information. So we do really do encourage if you find an institution that seems to have a lot of material that you're really interested in, look at it online, but also con go ahead and um, contact that institution because they likely have a lot more physical materials on site and they're always happy to get visitors, all our partners. So today I'm going to really focus on resources I think are particularly useful for family research on digitalnc.org. Um, and they kind of fall into three categories. Um, published materials, so your city directories, yearbooks, and newspapers. Uh, professional genealogy research notes, published works, and other materials. So that would be either a single genealogist that has done a lot of research. Um, and often they'll donate their research notes to an institution. Um, so that they're available to the public for other research. 
Um, they, these professional genealogists also put out published works. And then also genealogical societies um, across the state, a lot of them have newsletters and other materials that uh, these local institutions collect and we have been working on digitizing. And then we have a few funeral program collections that really are an amazing resource of uh, family history and connections, particularly for the African American community. Um, we have one from Durham County and one from Chatham County. And then across the site, you never know what you're going to find. And so a lot of our stuff has full text searching or family names in keywords. And so you can always try a keyword search across the site generally, because you never know what you might find. So the first type of uh, published work that I want to talk to you all about today are city directories. So we have scanned almost 1,000 city directories from cities across North Carolina. Um, we literally have scanned almost everyone we can get our hands on. Um, and we have digitized them up to 1967. So we have a kind of a 50 year uh, cutoff that we've been using. And so the collection spans from a 1865 Wilmington city directory um, to towns across the state's directories in the later uh, 1960s. And so this is a city directory landing page. You can see you can search across it. Um, you can browse by city, by county, or by year. And you can also just view all of them. Um, so it really just depends on what you're looking for. And you'll also notice that UNCG has digitized their own year, uh, the Greensboro City directories. And so we have a link to those as well on our site. So if you are looking for Greensboro resources, I highly recommend you go to their website. And this is a page. So if you do do a search for a city directory and pull one up, um, this is a view of what it looks like. And so this is a view of the the content management system we have, it's called Content DM. And this is what you're going to be seeing across a lot of digital collections um, for the state. Not only collections for Digital NC, but also UNC Chapel Hill, the State Library, the State Archives. We all use Content DM. And so this is what it's going to look like. And so you can do a full page, uh, a full text search across the city directory. And you'll notice that red arrow there is pointing to where you would click to do a search. And then over on the right hand side, you can see w if a page is highlighted in red, then that word that you searched appears on that page. And this is uh, just one page from a city directory. And it shows the wide variety of information you can find, uh, details you can find. And so this is particularly useful if you are a genealogy researcher or just getting started. Something they often talk about is finding your fan club. So your friends, family, associates, and neighbors of your ancestor. And city directories are an amazing resource for particularly finding your neighbors and also the associates of that person. Um, so the details you can find are address, of a particular person, their occupation, often their spouse. Race was denoted in a lot of these early, um, like middle of the 19th or 20th century city directories. Um, it tells if they're a renter or an owner, and so you can track their neighbors. You can also see who they worked for. And then if you know where they worked, then you could do a search across that city directory and figure out who else worked there. And so you can figure out who their coworkers were as well. So they are, is a wealth of information. And then if you're doing research, say, on a house, you can also track over time who lived in that house, who probably built that house, who were neighbors that were living in the houses nearby. And so there's just so much information you can pull from these um, materials. And they are pretty standardized over time. So once you really get into one, you can usually figure out the, how they look. Um, and if you want to go through several years tracking, say, an address or a person in a city. And so now I want to do a real quick just live search of a city directory because it can be a little wonky. Um, and so if you go to the digitalnc.org uh, main page and then you go down to city directories and click on that. And I'm going to do just a search in, and you can actually search across city directories. So they are full text searchable and if you do a search in this top search box here, uh, it will search across them. So I'm going to do a search for Buchanan. And this pulls up all the city directories in which the word Buchanan shows up. And that's a pretty common name in North Carolina. So we got a lot of results, over 700. Um, 
And so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this first top hit, which is from High Point. And you can see that it's already done right here. It's already done that search for Buchanan, and it tells me that they have, it has found 52 instances of that name. And so you can see if you zoom in right here and then scroll down and you look here and oh yes, there's, there was a company called Buchanan Plumbing and Heating Incorporated and it will tell you what page. So it often, they had ads. So on the left side lines of a lot of pages throughout this and then a full page ad on page 148. And so that's really useful. And over here on the right side of your screen, you will have a thumbnail view of all the pages that are in the city directory. And you can also do a content view. And I prefer that view for really tracking down where this text shows up because it shrinks it and you can zoom through a little faster. And so you'll note that right now we're looking at page nine where it found one instance of Buchanan. And then if you scroll down, We're going to take a little while. So the first part of city directory tends to be ads, information about the town, stuff like that. So you're going to want to skip through to the back of the city directory to really find the list of addresses and names. Um, so just know, often these are several hundred page book volumes that you're looking through, you know, 400, 500 page volumes, especially as you get into the 40s and 50s. There's a lot of information in them. So you might have to scroll a little. So we're going to scroll down and see what our next page is. So here we are, here in the 400s, here's page 405, has three instances of Buchanan. So let's see what's available there. So we'll zoom in again. Oh, and you'll notice that it appears there's a, this right here we have the last name Buchanan, and then a list of everyone with that last name in town and where they lived. And so we can find here that there was a junior press operator, a section man at Highland Cotton Mill, a watchman at Thomasville Chair Company, um, someone who worked at Diamond Mills, and then you have the listing for that Buchanan Plumbing and Heating that we found at the beginning that had an advertisement. And you can see their addresses. Um, you can see this Milton R here, it has in parentheses Hazel, that was his wife. And so the amount of information you can find in these city directories is just really amazing. And um, so I highly recommend starting with these resources if you're able to put a person in a particular city um, and really track where they were living, who they were working with, who they were married to, um, whether they were renting or owning. You can find all that information in your city directories. All right, so in addition to city directories, uh, another large collection of printed material that we have on our site are yearbooks. Um, we have done yearbooks, digitized yearbooks from almost all the college and universities in the state, um, including some big names like Duke, um, and many high schools, including several African-American high schools that closed after integration. For the college yearbooks, those can go all the way up right to 2017. For the high school yearbooks, we do have a 50-year privacy embargo, and so the majority of those do end in 1967. But um, we have libraries and other and our other partners who literally in January will call us and say, okay, it's 2018, let's add our 1968 yearbooks. So know that we're constantly adding yearbooks to the site as well. So this is what the main page looks like. It's pretty simple, again, to uh, navigate. You've got your college and university yearbooks, and then you have your high school yearbooks. Um, these are searchable, but you cannot search across them full text, unfortunately. You do have to know the school you're looking for, and then you're going to have to go to the year, and then you can do a full text search of the yearbook. So that is one limitation of these. But usually, once you know the school, you can you can really just dive in deep um, on these yearbooks. They're an amazing resource. This is a page view um, of a yearbook. This is the Carver High School 1950 Yellow Jacket in Winston-Salem. And you can see here, you'll notice that uh, within the yearbook up there in the top right where the red arrow is, I did a full text search for Freeman. And then down on the bottom underneath the page, you can see several little yellow tabs 
that show up and that's where the name Freeman or the word Freeman showed up in this yearbook and so then you can click right to that page and so this is one of the pages where it showed up and so you have a student whose first name was Freeman um, who I was able to, to pin down um, in the 1950 yearbook. And so again, I'm going to do another quick demo of how to use our yearbook site. So if you're starting from the Digital NC website, you go to yearbooks, which is the top tab here. And we're just going to do a quick search. Um, we're going to go to our high school yearbook. So I paged over. And then I'm going to search in Burlington High School in Alamance County. So I'm going to click on that Burlington High. Um, but I also want to show real quick, <clears throat> if you do click View All, this shows all the ones that are available. And so I'm going to pick the 1933 yearbook. So I'm going to click here. And that pulls it up, and so you'll see you can page through really easy by just clicking on the book. Um, there's a full pay, view full screen option that you can click, and so that will pull up, up for your full screen. So if I click on that, you'll see it really you can zoom in and, and view it really nicely. Um, and when, in this full page view and in the previous view, you can search inside the book. And so I'm going to do a search for Williams, very common last name, and I figure we'll probably find someone with the last name Williams in the yearbook. So I did a search, and you'll notice there's two instances, so the two little tabs pulled down, and so we'll click on that first one, it zooms right to that page, and then again you'll see this familiar red blocking that shows you where that name shows up on the page. Um, this is how we search across our newspapers as well. Um, that's how it indicates that it found that name. And so you'll see here, and then you could zoom in and figure out that Ross Williams was in um, well, I don't know what this book is group is, but you'll see all the information about, you can figure out who Ross Williams was in a club with, who were the officers for that club, and then right here you can note, here's a picture of everybody um, in the club. And so these are really awesome ways to find uh, pictures of ancestors who, you know, not so long gone, um, and find out, you know, who they were associating with, who their classmates were, who their teachers were um, it, while they were in school. And so it's a really great resource. All right. Um, if you tuned in a little earlier, I had a whole session on newspapers that are on our site. And so I highly encourage checking out the recording for that if you missed it. Um, I'm not going to go into how we do our searching on newspapers, but newspapers are an amazing resource that you can search. Um, our newspapers are available uh, through digitalnc.org. And they come from across North Carolina. They're mostly small town papers and student newspapers. We have 22 African American papers available um, and 327 papers from across North Carolina. And so if you go to those and you can search them, they're full text searchable across the papers. So you could search, do obituary searches, marriage announcements, just general news about uh, any particular person that might be in your family. Um, a lot of these small town newspapers had every, live, every detail about that person's life. So who they went to tea with that week, um, who was visiting home from college, who was out of town for Thanksgiving. All those details are in these newspapers. So you can really learn a lot about your family um, through them if, if we do have that paper available on our site. And again, like everything on our site, we are constantly adding more newspapers. So do check back. If we don't have something that you're looking for now, we may add it in the future. Um, and the next type of materials I want to talk about are the research files of many genealogists that been, we've added over time. Um, these are a little trickier to find on our site, um, but I will show you in a live demo how, how you can really narrow down to just these materials. Um, but they can be an invaluable source of information, and if you have a family name that has been researched by 
a professional genealogist or one of the genealogical societies across the state, then there can be a wealth of information that, and the work has already been done kind of for you to get started with these resources. Um, again, these are in Content DM, and this is just a small snapshot of some of the manuscript family papers that we have available um, from several different institutions. And so this is how they would show up. And so we often have uh, the family name and then their collection and then whose files they might be from. And then when you click on one of these pages, it again kind of looks like the city directory view. Um, you can full text uh, search across it and I will warn you though a lot of these are handwritten and so the full text searching is going to be kind of limited. Um, but if they're typewritten, we should have pretty good full text search. And you'll also note down there at the bottom by the red arrow, with these type of files, we really do try to pull out the family names that are available. And so in this particular file, you'll notice a whole list of names, Watkins, Wheeler, Wooten, Chrome, et cetera, um, that all those family names you can find information for. So if you know that you had a family in a particular area and we have genealogy papers from that area, we really encourage you to, to dig through and see what you might be able to find. Um, this can often be a first step and then you can kind of track back where they were doing their research um, and find those resources as well. And so I just want to show you how to kind of get to those materials um, doing a live search. So. Well, I may have lost my mouse again. Well, all right, so to do that search is very similar to city directories. Um, you'd want to go to our memorabilia collection, um, which is that, that link there, and find your genealogies. And then once you click on that genealogy link um, within the browse view, then you can search across them um, in this view here. And then within, once you find one that you're interested in looking at, you would search it very much like how I searched the city directories. You could do a full text search through it or just page through um, the papers on that individual page. All right. Um, and then another collection that I think is really useful um, are our funeral programs collection. And we have two main ones that are both full text searchable, our Chatham County funeral programs. And the link to that is there, as well as our R. Kelly Bryant obituary collection, which is from Durham County Library. Uh, but those obituaries cover more than just Durham County. They also cover Orange, Northampton, um, kind of the areas around Durham. Um, and that funeral collection in particular is really focused on the African-American community in those locations. Um, and this is a, that collection goes all the way up to 2016. Mr. Bryant was collecting those constantly. Um, and so that is a really great resource. Um, we've done all of the Chatham County funeral programs and we are working through the Bryant obituary collection at this time. Um, so both of those can be searched. Um, however, in addition to those, we also have scattered obituaries and funeral programs throughout Digital NC um, that aren't really in a specific collection. And if you go to that memorabilia page again and click on obituaries, you can narrow down what obituaries we have available on the site. And that's outside of what you're going to find in our newspaper collection, which of course all the newspapers tended to have obituaries. And so that is an uh, endless resource um, of obituaries for one. And as I've been saying, we're constantly adding to the website and we announce all those additions via our blog, so do check back. Um, and one thing you could do is if you're really specifically looking for genealogy resources, um, you can just search our blog. You'll see there in the bottom um, right corner, it says blog search and I just type genealogy and that's gonna pull up any posts that we've tagged with genealogy or we talk about the usefulness of that particular resource in doing genealogy research. And so that's a really good way to maybe narrow down what you might want to start with on our site. But again, everything on the site could potentially have information about your family. Um, and so if you do have, um, do have family members who are from North Carolina, I really encourage you to check out our site because we do have things that are really hyper local that you might not be able to find at, say, the State Library or State Archives um, about your family. Um, 
diaries, letters, all that sort of thing are all available on the site. Um, so if you have any questions now, feel free to put them in the live chat. Um, and always free, feel, feel free to reach out with any questions to us at the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center. We are more than happy to help you track down resources that might be useful, people that might be useful to talk to, et cetera, um, at digitalnc at unc.edu. And also, please do fill out uh, the survey at the end of this. OK, Kristen, we have a few questions from our viewers. Question number one, are the digital collections from archives.ncdcr.org shown in the last session included in the digitalnc.org? Or are these two different digital resources to be searched separately? They are two different resources. Um, Digital NC is the resources that come from these diverse institutions across the state. Um, and it's their materials that we are digitizing and then they get sent, sent back home to these institutions. Um, the materials at the other digital collection site, which is, I'm going to mess up, uh, NCDCR, or digital. digital. Dot NCD. Dot NCDCR. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you'll notice I don't know the website, so that is different. Um, it is a different site, and that is materials that are coming from the state archives primarily um, that are from the state. And so those are completely different resources, and you do have to search that site completely separately from ours. Okay, our next question. If I have yearbooks that aren't on your site, how do I get them on there? That is a great question, and we get that all the time. Um, so a lot of people tend to have yearbook collections of their own, and they'll go on our site and want to see their yearbooks, and they say, wait a second, I graduated in 1959, and I know it can be on your site, and I'm not finding it. Um, and so what we would encourage you to do is if you are interested in getting them digitized is that we do have to work with institutions directly for materials and we don't work with individuals directly. Um, but you could contact us and we could put you in contact with whatever local institution makes the most sense for those yearbooks. Or you could get in contact with your local public library, your local historic society, um, whatever institution is close to you to you, but also close to where that high school existed. Um, and then they can contact us and we can work with them. And if they're already a partner of ours, that's really easy. Um, and you would have to get them the yearbooks and then they would get them to us. And if they're not a partner yet, that's also usually pretty easy. Um, we just explain to them how our partnership works, which is very simple. Basically, we just ask that materials are brought to us. We digitize them and then we send them home. Um, and then we can get them online. So there's a lot of different ways we can make that happen. So if you do have yearbooks and you want to get them on our site, you can contact us or please do try to reach out to your local cultural heritage institution. Thanks. And we've got an active group this session, lots of questions. All right. So our last one, are there any items in Digital NC that may be overlooked as a good source for local history research? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I think something that uh, people maybe do overlook for local history research more than just family research um, are the yearbooks. So the yearbooks can be a great resource of knowing, you know, who is living in the town, what was being taught in town, but also they tend to have business directories at the back. And so you can see what businesses were in town, um, what that business wanted to highlight. Sometimes for the really old yearbooks, they'll have pictures around town, either with the students or without the students. Um, and so I think those can be a really great resource, not just the high school yearbooks, but if a college is in a particular town, often, especially really er early on in those college days, those can be a really great resource about what's going on in the town, um, pictures of Main Street or big you know, events that might be happening. Um, and so I think yearbooks are kind of an overlooked use uh, thing that can be used for local history research, not just family research. Great. Thanks for answering our viewers' questions. All right. Thank you. And again, fill out the survey. Um, and thanks for watching. <laughs>